Schwa Sound Simple Literacy Nuggets for Better Teaching and Learning. Let's play a game. Please listen to these words first and tell me which do you think is the common sound in all of them? Zebra, Oven, Pupil, Cotton, Seren. Think for a few seconds. There's only one sound that they have in common, and please remember we are talking about sounds, not letters. Zebra, oven, pupil, curtain, sedan. Do you have it? Well, here's the answer, the uh sound. And we can find it in all of these vowels. Did you get it right? Well, if you didn't, don't worry, most people don't even know this sound exists. However, believe it or not, it is the most common sound in the English language. It has its own very special name and symbol. It's called schwa, and this sort of upside down e is the symbol linguists use to represent it. It is estimated that about one in every five words have the schwa sound. Let's repeat the sound again. Uh. It's a very neutral sound. It can really mimic any other vowel sound. If we were to describe it, we could say it's very similar to the ah uh sound for the letter U as in umbrella, but softer and weaker as this sound appears on unstressed syllables. Why does English have the schwa sound? In a nutshell, the schwa sound is the resting position of the mouth for English speakers. For instance, it is the sound that comes out of our mouth when we are thinking and don't know what to say. Um, uh. The very weird thing is that in English, we sometimes replace the common sound of vowels with the schwa sound. Think of all the words we've seen before, but the list goes on and on. Are you enjoying the video so far? If so, subscribe and like for more videos like this one. And don't forget to check the video description for a comprehensive schwa sound word list. And now let's continue with the video. This is true even in groups of letters when they are part of an unstressed syllable. Teacher, doctor. In these words, ER and OR are simply reduced to the schwa sound in British English. Teacher, doctor. In American English, the ER in teacher and the OR in doctor are just a very reduced schwa sound plus the ER sound. We use the schwa sound to allow unstressed syllables to be said more quickly. This way, the main bits of spoken words are easier to place on stressed syllables. It all comes down to the English language being a very rhythmical language. In fact, the sound of the language is organized around the stressed syllables. To sound natural in English, we need to put a lot of stress on the stressed syllables and relax our mouth on the unstressed ones. And that is when the schwa sound comes in handy. Otherwise, we would sound robotic. Sometimes, on informal conversations, we even reduce to a simple o uh sound the vowels in words like to or you. Think of, I gave it to you versus I gave it to you. When confronted with a very neutral sound and you can't just point your finger on what it is, you might be dealing with the schwa sound. How to go about teaching children the schwa sound? In my opinion, even if it's the most common sound in English, I'm not very keen on teaching beginner readers the schwa sound. It is a really tricky concept to grasp and therefore, I do not think that most beginner readers will be ready to understand it. In fact, I think it might just totally confuse them and delay their progress. But the good news is that it doesn't matter because they can still learn to read phonetically and become really good readers without being explicitly taught the schwa sound. We can teach this sound later on. In fact, it will become way more relevant when we switch our focus from reading to correct spelling. I hear you there. What to do when confronted with the schwa sound there? These are my go-to tips. Number one, schwa sounding our control syllables. You just need to teach them about the letter R distorting the sound. Number two, one-syllable words containing the schwa sound, the, sun, 
introduce them as an exception. Fortunately, there aren't so many. Number three, longer words with a schwa sound, pencil, carrot, cactus. As the schwa sound is such a neutral sound, it can really mimic any vowel sound. In my experience, it is the sound that is going to naturally roll out of your students' mouths when they are reading these words, if they are native English speakers. How to prepare children for the schwa sound? Once children can decode simple two-syllable words with competence, you can start to prepare them for learning about the schwa sound. Mention that letters can make different sounds. By this point, they probably know that vowels make two sounds. They either say their short sound or their name, so this will not come as a surprise. When does this become relevant? When children are learning to spell correctly. The schwa sound really complicates things in the English spelling. How to know what is the right vowel to pick? In fact, some children pick no vowel at all. While these would be worthy of another entire video, these are the main tips and principles to keep in mind. Great exposure to words. We achieve this by reading, by seeing the same words over and over. The idea here is to develop a natural instinct around what looks good and correct and what doesn't. Make sure your child understands the difference between stressed and unstressed syllables. Group words with similar spelling patterns for the schwa sound and teach them at the same time. For instance, there's a family of words that start with the schwa sound spelled with the letter A. About, above, again, ago, ahead, alive, alone, amount, away. By the way, remember, for a handy and super comprehensive schwa sound word list, check the video description. This material is 100% free, by the way. Exaggerate the pronunciation of words. Take a word such as balloon, exaggerate it, overpronounce it, you'll end up pronouncing an A ah sound instead of an A uh sound. Balloon. Remember we also said at the beginning of the video that if we didn't use the schwa sound, we would sound robotic. Say balloon as if you were a robot. You'll pronounce it with an A ah sound. Balloon. For those really struggling with the schwa sound, it can come in handy to know the statistics. From the most to the least common spelling, this is how we use vowels to represent the schwa sound. A, E, I, O, U. Consider introducing morphology and etymology study to your lessons. This is an effective method in which students analyze word parts structure, origin, and history of words to understand meanings, spellings, constructions, and connections. This idea is beyond the scope of this video, but if interested, please tell me in the comments and I'll make another video about it in the future.